welcome to TIO Stadium for this qualifying final between the Tiwi Bombers and the St Mary's Football Club. My name is Ed Cowles, I'm joined by Josh Sampson from AFL NT as the Muckmucks, the Wanderers, are through to the semi-finals after a big win against the Waratahs Football Club. 99 points, Josh, did you see that coming? Oh, Edo, I'm not sure if I saw it coming. Hello to you and welcome to everyone joining us for the live stream for this game this evening. I predicted that uh, the Mugmucks were going to get up, but in the end, the last quarter, they were just in absolutely blistering form. And, uh, you know, the uh, the winner of this game, the loser of this game, I should say, would be having a look at uh, the Mugmucks as they come off and just maybe quietly hoping that uh, they're not going to be fronting up against them in the first semi next week. They're on fire, the Mugmucks. Uh, they've won their last five games in a row. The only concern is Daniel Motlop's hamstring. He pulled that early in the second quarter and uh, we didn't see him again. Whether he fronts up next week or not against the loser of this game that we're about to see between St Mary's and Tiwi, that is yet to be decided. So all the best to uh, him and getting himself up and running because we do want to see the best players playing. Brendan Favola, he kicked a half a dozen goals uh, but didn't really look too interested in the game. I guess when you're down by 100 points in a final, it's easy to start uh, thinking about other things. He had his hands behind his back. Uh, wandering around, pacing it looked like he was doing in the forward line late in that last quarter. Maybe thinking of a cold winter in Yarrawonga. Yes, I think he probably was. Yeah, he kicked six for the game, as you mentioned, Edo, but uh, certainly still well short of a gallop, not in the same physical condition that he used to be. And, uh, you know, just, again, some of that uh, pressure around the forward line it used to go in, in fits and starts for him when he was at Carlton and, and at Brisbane. And, uh, yeah, even though he kicked six, I'd hardly say it would have been his best day at the office. No, there was... Uh, there was well, there's nothing to say that he was leaning on the fence or anything and grabbing a beer from someone in the crowd or anything like that. Uh, it was just that, you know, you're down by 100 points. Uh, I guess your mind can wander, but it's been great to have him up here in the NTFL. Whether we see him again is another thing altogether. Tiwi Bombers, though, St Mary's Football Club. It is going to be an absolute ripper of a game here tonight. Uh, the Bombers, believe it or not, are premiership favourites, even though Nycliffe, who got the bye this week, finished on top of the ladder. The main reason is that they have been so dominant over the last five or six weeks. Uh, they've beaten the teams who they, well, are in the, and amongst themselves at the moment. They knocked off St Mary's, uh, they, they look good against Nycliffe at times and their forward line is just scintillating, to, just to put it in one word. Yeah, no it certainly is and uh, they have, they've most definitely been the benchmark team over the last five to six weeks. I guess the only thing that a lot of people have got question marks about is whether this, even though they are premiership favourites, can they go all the way? Only won three games out of 11 in final series have been known to go missing at this time of the year but also uh, this is such a fascinating clash because uh, a few people are asking some questions about St Mary's their form against uh, Wanderers last week not what we've been expecting to see so uh, no it's going to be absolutely sensational and I think uh, the winner of this match t um, takes a fairly big step forward in shoring up who's going to be playing off in the grand final and there is a little bit of a hoodoo with the Tiwi Bombers when it comes to final series uh, as you've uh, mentioned earlier as we see uh, the likes of uh Thunder Watch and also Tipamanta Mary uh, just shake hands before the game and say day to each other. Uh, Roy Cantilla now saying uh, day. and look there's, a, there's been a strong link between Tiwi Islands football and of course the St Mary's Football Club. They played off in uh, a grand final only a couple of years ago and the Saints did it quite comfortably in the end. Tiwi Bombers are out for some respect tonight and if they can knock off the Saints, well uh, there is going to be some really good football coming your way over the next couple of weeks. The umpire holds the ball aloft and we're about to get down to business as Smith and Avard do the ruck work. Uh, Avard wins the hit out. Pelopamini wrapping up Biggie Vallejo, maybe in the back, and it is so by the umpire. It's been going a couple of seconds. It's great when there's a changeover again. This afternoon, the Eagles support, of course, pretty well supported uh, across Territory footy. But uh, great to see that uh, both Bombers and Saints supporters have got here in good numbers today. It's a good, a great advertisement for the NTFL. So Dunn clears out to Dion Munkara, trying to find Corey Kelly on the outer side and a seen over the boundary line. And uh, Joshy Heath, one of the, well, big fans of Joshy Heath, is one of our cameramen uh, who's very close to us at the moment. And he's focusing in on Joshy Heath for some strange reason. Uh, just 
loves the way the Pistons uh, start to shake his legs every now and then. As the ball is up and under, Daryl White uses his body well, still wearing the long sleeve jumper. Bit of a tradition for Daryl as he pops it up and a fine lead out there by McFarlane doing some bullocking work, trying to get it out there to Rioli. To Smith, he's under pressure by the Bombers' defence at the moment. Good little lace-out kick there by the NT Thunder captain in Cameron Island, but doesn't find a target and the Bombers will look to clear through Papunga Mary. So uh, Rupert Papunga Mary at centre half back just uh, trying to settle things down for Tiwi. They do like to play on and play on quickly. Heading out to the big Ruckman in Bongetti. Trying to shake the tag as he's being hassled there by John Anstis and it's seen over the boundary line and it will be thrown in roughly 60 metres away from the Tiwi goal. Yeah, been a pretty scrappy start so far. I don't think uh, both sides are uh, just working out of a few nerves in the opening minutes, but uh, no, a good chance here uh, for the Bombers going forward. So quick kick away there by Corey Kelly, up and under, heading in the Bongetti direction. It's volleyball action at the moment as John Anstess lays a couple of spikes on the ball, but not much happening as uh, Shannon Rioli gets a quick kick away. In fact, it was Josh Heath, and uh, he's just kicked for touch and, in fact, kicked it out of bounds on the full. Dion Monk Kara will kick it in and jumping over the uh, one metre and a half fence to pick it up. So Dion Mankara finds Patrick Heenan. So just settling things down now, our Tiwi, a big high and up and under kick, heading in the Bongetti direction again. Also there was Avard and uh, just heads over the boundary line and this is a good win for Tiwi as they've just kicked for touch. And it will be thrown in just inside their forward uh, 50. They're heading towards the McMillan Road end of the ground today. That's left a screen. Whilst uh, the boys from St Mary's are heading towards their change rooms end, based at the airport end of the ground. Uh, so some quick handball work. Tapping it on there to the big fella and Chris Smith. They've got no support there, all, but then a great tackle is laid in. Here come the Tiwi Bombers. Bradley Palapamini hand passes over his head. They're just trying to slowly set things up. Brought Jimmy a little chip kick and uh, finds the target. So the big fella in Bongetti will line up from roughly 30 metres out and we'll get our first score of the game. So a very healthy crowd here tonight as finals has started for season 2011-2012. There's Tim Bongetti. 30 metres out, 45 degree angle. Good looking run up by the big fella. Let's see if he can put it through the big sticks as he pushes it across to the right of the big goal post. And it's through for a behind in our first. Just interesting, it's interesting to see, Ado. It looks as though uh, we, we, of course, raised some question marks when the Bombers ran around the other week with uh, the size of their forward line. Obviously, uh, Bongetti, the big rig's going to be uh, a bit more of a focal point for them and hopefully we'll give them some much-needed height. So Collins with the ball for the Saints. Chipping backwards to go forwards. And a fine mark taken there by Cameron Islet on the half-back flank. He switches play. Heading out now, and a good mark taken there by Gordon. Dealt with after the Kiwi Bombers through Patrick Heenan. Had to be good with the kick. Misses Narby Kelly. Interfering with uh, Cameron Isla there. Two Thunder teammates who will be lining up in the Thunder Guernseys over the next couple of weeks. But tonight they are opponents. There's Clayton looking to have a big game from him tonight. The number 16. Chipped it across the stringer. And now Collins. So Collins in the middle of the ground. Looking for targets, they've got to be precise with their... This one lines up for young Cooper. He's an excellent small forward. Love the way that he's worked throughout the season. And, uh, well, this one's uh, not a, this is a pretty much a straight set shot. Yeah, very much so. Great build-up there from the Saints. The uh, Bombers, as they do so well, their defensive zone was just uh, really pressing hard all over the ground. But uh, through the likes of uh, Cameron Island, they were able to work their way through the zone. Really smart play there. And uh, straight out in front, is, uh, the distance might test him just a little as uh, something seems to be happening in the goal square here. Nope, they're going back uh, to the 50, but yeah, this is my test him a little bit, but uh, as you said, he's an excellent player and, uh, you know, they've got a great kick on him as well. So Dermot Woods, the pocket rocket. Cooper pops it up and does, doesn't make the distance and it's kept in play and rolls out of bounds into the forward pocket there. So just didn't have enough distance on it there. 
And the ball uh, in the attacking zone for St Mary's. As a big horde of players around this scrimmage. Good ruck work there by McFarlane, trying to scoop it up there as Papunga Mary does so. And away they go clearing, but it's only as far as the smallest player on the ground in Joshy Heath. And Heath will line up, but the piston legs of Heath can do. So Heath comes in, wastes no time. His lights are on here at TIO. And it's one point at a time here tonight at TIO. One point apiece. And we've been going roughly seven minutes in this first quarter of a qualifying final, as Dion Mankara has marked. Got to be precise with the kick, put some curve on it. A good mark taken there by Mungatopi. This is Donald. He's going to look to play on quickly. He's got players streaming all over the place. Draws the man beautifully. Lovely pick up, and here come the Bombers. Have to be precise. Finds Bongetti. Gets it back. Mankara again, a high up and under kick, looking for Epram. Puts one mitten out, here comes Ross Tungatal, and what a talent he is. He sees it over the boundary line, and it will be thrown in. So great to have your company tonight here at TIO Stadium on AFL NTV. Ed Kalisher and Josh Sampson joining you tonight. As uh, the likes of Corey Kelly misjudges it, Narby Kelly. Now working with the ball. Gets the ball there from Cantilla to Patrick Heenan on the outer side. Tipamanta Mary outmarked there by Collins. And he moves it to the outer side to Iggy Vallejo. What a stalwart of the St Mary's Football Club he has been. Played over 200 games. Finds McFarlane on the outer side. In fact, it's Shannon Rioli off to Heath. Heath, a long penetrating kick, looking in the McFarlane direction. Off hands to White. Also under there is Wilson for St Mary's. And it's all wrapped up and it will be thrown up. No, a free kick for holding the ball, in fact. Just couldn't get it out there, was Wilson. The Tiwi Bombers play on quickly and a uh, little bit of a howdy-do going on. And 50 metres. Zavard, little lace out kick, finds Tunga Talon, made it hard for him as he kicked it at the foot of him. And uh, a bit of feeling going on out there between these two sides. A Rossi Tunga Talon uh, up against his former Thunder teammate in Smith. The ball will be thrown in. So Bongetti doing the ruck work. He taps it down. Looks for Papunga Mary and Tipper Manta Mary. Will be thrown up yet again. Tap down there by White as the third man up. Here comes Cooper. He crashes into his own player. That time it was Woodley. Slowly but surely St. Mary starting to get some poise into their game, but the pressure of Tiwi is really putting him under it. Papunga Mary gets a handball off. Pinched there by Iggy Vallejo. Plays on quickly. The big loping Ruckman in Smith. Smith doesn't take a bounce. Instead he goes long and he puts it through for a behind. Two plays one. Yep, still uh, painting by numbers point style here. But, uh, gee, I thought that was a, a poor decision from Ryan Smith in the end. He had uh, he had a couple of guys uh, calling for it in the goal square and uh, probably should have passed it off. Well, ton of ball action as the miss kick was coming out of the back line. They're under a lot of pressure at the moment here, uh, Tiwi Bombers, as they're putting on the pressure. Good work by McFarlane with a check side kick, and he puts it through for a behind. So before you blink, there's something going on here at TIO Stadium tonight. The ball will be kicked in yet again. So already the pressure staying to mount. These two sides have been known to kick big, massive scores in this competition right throughout the season, but they're just checking themselves at the moment. Dion Mankara with the ball, pops it up to Roy Cantilla, a good mark, leading John Anstis there. Good crowd here tonight, roughly about a thousand people. That's a really good crowd here for local footy. I'm sure the Eagles will be uh, sticking around to see who's going on what. Next week, Cameron Eilert shot. Just trying to find some space for himself. He pops it up and finds Iggy Vallejo. Good work there by Mankara to get rid of the ball. Away they go again, they clear it onto the outer side. So they switch the ball well here for Mary. 
And Bradley Pelopamini is leading up the wing, but Papunga Mary's taken a couple of bounces. He's gone oh. straight down the middle. The ball is smothered by the big ruckman in Smith. Going in hard there was Avard. Plenty of pressure on the kick, and Cameron Isler could chop in for his first goal of the game and for the match, but he too is painting by numbers with points, and that's through for a behind. Yeah, really unfortunate there for the Bombers. Uh, the big rig, Bongetti, he was absolutely screaming for it. He was all by himself for about 10 metres, and they had numbers streaming forward through the midfield. But, uh, oh, that's a beautiful kick it into the middle. But uh, wasn't meant to be, and uh, the Saints, they're really peppering their 50 here. Saints boys were all over it. And the smallest player. Mm, yeah. Little bloke on the ground, but just works incredibly hard. And it, is, it really is a vital cog in the green machine. And uh, yeah, it is. It's great. We've uh, finally got our uh, first goal on the board. Yeah. What happened there? Man crushes, we think. You never know. As Smith does the ruck work, a good, strong tackle there by Pro Jimmy. Fantastic work there by the TOE Bombers. And Samson Mungatopi just all fired up. Oh, look at that little man. The little men have just got some angry pills tonight. They're all ready to go as Heath again gets a kick away. Papunga Mary tries to trap it with his feet. It's fallen to Cooper. He pops it up looking for oh. Islet. And he knew he had overrun the ball, so he was just hoping he overread his defender as well. But that was marked beautifully. And here comes poor Jimmy. He's a really good talent, this kid. Off to Mankara. So this is Dion. Played his 150th a couple of weeks ago. Corey Kelly. So Tiwi. Oh. Just uh, mucking around with the ball at the moment and it's out on the full. That time there by Simon Mankara. So St Mary starting to get on top. Heath had a huge amount of the ball and a good mark taken there by Corey Kelly. So the little men doing the job early in this game. Looking for Mungatopi, under pressure. Cooper shakes that tag, high up and under kick inside the forward 50. Ooh. Corey Kelly didn't see the big man coming across him. And away they go. Poor old McLinden nearly missed out on a mark. So here come the Bombers. They've got to use the ball well. Mungatopi again, gives it off to Samson Mungatopi. Just, uh, just butchered the kick there. Uh, Saints footy doing the job on the Tiwi Bombers at the moment. Vallejo, Rioli off the ground, into the forward 50. Islet's there as well. Trying to use the ball this time is Tippin Woody. This is Albert, finds the target. Corey Kelly, pressure starting to build here at TIO Stadium. Trying to get a quick handball away and just uh, couldn't use it as well as what he wanted to. And Jeremy Clayton with the ball. We've seen what he fielder is Cameron Islet stretches out the jokes. One of the nicest guys off the field but I tell you what you wouldn't want to come up against him the long-haired bandicoot. He can be as vicious as they come and when you get tackled you get tackled but he has always been able to pop up and kick three or four goals for his team and he looks like he's about to kick his first for tonight. Yeah, he does. Uh, I'm, I'm a bit like you at if I was coming up against him at the office. But, uh, geez, it's hot in the kitchen early, isn't it? A lot of turnovers happening both ways. The, the disposal not as clean and not as what we've been accustomed to. It's particularly the Bombers. But, uh, yeah, Cameron Isle here, about 50 out. Great chance to uh, put a nice little buffer here between uh, themselves and the Bombers. So Cameron Isle it. High looping kick, he looks to have pushed this one to the left of the post, he has done. That's another behind. So 1-5-11 to one straight behind and this is very unusual for the Tiwi Bombers. It's Dion Mankara looks to kick it in. So they've formed a huddle. And watch them to break away. Kick is going to get pressure on him now to play on sooner rather than later. High bomb kick. And, uh, well, it will be thrown up. He could see it coming. He had no options. The pack didn't really. And the ball will be bounced to just on the goal square. And this is another opportunity for St. So McFarlane nearly grabs it out. Daryl White over the top. Was it touched? I don't think it was. An epic moment time premiership play with the Brisbane Lions. Daryl White, a great opportunistic goal. 
And already the Saints are putting pressure on the Tiwi Bombers to do something tonight. Yes, yeah, certainly are. I think uh, the Bombers will be thinking to themselves at the moment, how do we respond to this? Because, again, it's not a position they're accustomed to being in. But, uh, yeah, most certainly an epic moment of the day there from Darawadi. Some unbelievably freakish things when he played in the AFL and uh, hasn't lost much of his touch at all since his return to the NTFL. You're on AFL NTV. Ed Callishaw and Josh Sampson with you tonight. Great to have your company. Ross Tungatalam pushed off the ball there. Cameron Island again already influential. High up and under kick that time there by Stringer. It's bouncing a couple of times, heading in the Darrell White direct just before Christmas, which actually in fact happened against this side, the Tiwi Bombers. So the ball tapped in this time. Working hard onto it is Collins. Bombers really looking to clear the ball. Bradley Palapamini swamped by a sea of green. Joshy Heath in and amongst the action yet again. Stacks on the mill and it will be thrown up. They've just gone 19 minutes in this first quarter of this qualifying final. The winner will play Nycliffe next week. The loser will take on the Wanderers after their 99-point win over the Waratahs. Their season all done and dusted for 2011-2012. Umpire says play on. He'll have to blow it up again. And uh, plenty of players around this scrimmage. No one in the forward 50 for the Tiwi Bombers. The St. Mary's are really clogging their run up the ground. So Darrell White again tries to get a quick kick away. This time the Tiwi Bombers into the middle of the ground. Kevin Thunderwatcher uses his body. Much needed one. And the score goes to 117 to 2572. Geez, hasn't the crowd just apty of Bombers fans here to uh, cheer on their boys? And uh, Ephraim Tip and Woody, you got to love the way he goes about it. He's an absolute man mountain, but uh, geez, he can move. And uh, a great finish there from a great build-up from the Bombers. A little bit of uh, Pagan's Paddock for all those North supporters that are tuning into the coverage tonight. Just creating some space up forward and that fast break footy that they love to do. Here they go, other midfield tackled by Cameron Islet. Ball inside, trapped there by Ephraim. Got to work hard. Here comes the likes of Roy Cantilla. He's by himself. There's no one there in aid of him. Saints under pressure at the moment. Quick kick away to clear the ball. Plenty of time here for the likes of Woodley to pick it up. Balance himself and get the kick. Cleaned up there by Dion Mankara. And a free kick downfield going to Peter McFarlane. So great courage there by the youngster in Woodley as a switch of play. Got to use his body well. That time there was Stringer under pressure at Tiwi, but they don't seem to muck this one up as Papunga Mary starts to clear. Good work there by Corey Kelly. Bradley Palapamini's open, but he instead goes longer to Jerry Cunningham. The man who has kicked over 30 goals over the last two weeks uh, has got his bright and shiny uh, yellow brick road boots into the game early. And let's see what Jerry can do. One of the favourites for the Nichols medal next week, which you'll be able to see on AFL in TV. So Jerry Cunningham, coming off a big bag of 12 last week. Good. Oh. Just as you give him a rap, Joshy, <laughs> he hits the woodwork. Oh. It's 1 2 8, plays 2 5 17. I've got to stop doing that, I don't know, because uh, when I give blokes raps, they either miss it horribly or clunk it into the woodwork. But uh, yeah, as we know, that's what the Bombers are all about the, uh, the, the sensational boots. And uh, they've uh, they had a bit of a head of steam up here just to be able to get over that zone a little bit better. So trying to use the ball well that time is Clark as he tries to find a target of McFarlane. He's under pressure at the moment. Here come the Tiwi Bombers through Munga Topi. Hand passes over the top, starting to link up beautifully, maybe mucking around with the ball a little bit too much. Avar, but he's still going. He's done. Moves it on forward. Heath tackled. Great tackle there by Tipper Manta Mary. And here comes the big man in Bongetti. Laces out. He's starting to feel the crescendo, which is Tiwi Bombers football. So the Tiwi Bombers through Narby Kelly. Believe it or not, he's a backman for the NT Thunder. Let's see what he can do. Playing in the centre tonight for the Tiwi Bombers. Kicking right on 50. High up and under kick. The direction's a little bit off. Needs a mark. Jerry Cunningham at the bottom of it. And lucky we've got a rugby league game coming up here in the next couple of weeks because they'll look more like a try than to uh, work their way through St Mary's zone a little bit more. And some of the footy they've played in the last five or so minutes has been exactly what we've uh, used to. Vallejo under the pump now. Dunn's on his heels, literally. As Vallejo pops it up, has to be a good kick. 
looking for Combs. And it's a gr another great tackle. Tip him out. So ball to be thrown in on the outer side. Just near the scoreboard where it reads 2-5-17 to 1-3-9. Tap down there by Smith. Tiwi Bombers are the fall of this ball, but they play on quickly through Rioli. Oh, ping-ponging its way. Founds brought Jimmy. Little chip kick away. Narby Kelly with the ball, and they're linking up. Now, this is the Bombers football that we love to see. The run and gun through Tunga Talam. He shakes and bakes, rattles and rolls inside the forward 50, as precise as you like. about that? That is an epic moment of the day. Tiwi Bombers footy at its best here at TIO. Rocks Tunga Talam just absolutely lighting the place up and geez, I tell you what, again, the crowd is up and about. Um, gee, the way that they're starting to move the ball through the centre is exactly some of the footy that they've played during the, the minor round and uh, I don't know whether that's more to do with the fact that they're uh, a little bit cleaner with their disposal or perhaps the St Mary's midfield has dropped off in a little bit of efficiency but it uh, be tough going out there, it's still very humid, especially up here, I can only imagine what it'd be like at ground level. As Patrick Enan comes back on for the Tiwi Bombers and what a scintillating Ross Tungatalam. Tap down again and another centre break. This time Tipper He hand passes over the top, uh, looking in the Eprim direction. Got to use his body and just really didn't have any targets to give to. They're really just a bunch of midfielders playing up in the forward line, aren't they? There aren't really too many big fellas besides Bongetti. But it's just their skill and quickness. And you heard Paul Roo say some interesting things about speed in the game of AFL football and that it's disappearing to say about that. As bursting through the pack, there is Gordon, finds the target, and St Mary's will slow things down and play their possession game. So a kick away there from Hale. High and up on under kick, uh, Daryl White tried to mark the ball against McLinden. He plays on quickly. Lead up, trying to find the target in Bice, under pressure. Gets a hand pass through and here comes Joshy Heath who's been good in this first quarter. Needed protection, didn't get it. Under pressure from Bradley Pelipper Mini. And Avar just bombs it back from whence it came. Two on one situation. Daryl White missed it. Under pressure at the moment and here come the Tiwi Bombers again. A lace out kick to Ephraim. Whether he controlled that mark on the siren is another thing. It definitely hit his chest. Yeah, I was just thinking that. I thought uh, maybe the umpire maybe just give him the benefit of the doubt there. But from here, it looked like it was just out of time. But nonetheless, uh, Big Ephraim's got a chance to uh, get the bombers this evening. Well, St Mary's, they had their chances in front of goals in this first quarter. They've kicked 2-5. This could be 3-3 for the Tiwi Bombers if he kicks it accurately. Ephraim, Tip and Woody. The big full forward, a linchpin for the Tiwi Bombers. Looks good off the boot. And they're up and about the Bombers tonight in this qualifying final. 3-3 of 17. You're on AFL in TV. We'll be back shortly with the second quarter. comes to Alice Springs on Saturday, March 3. The Adelaide Crows play the Brisbane Lions at Traeger Park. Tickets available now from these outlets. Gates open 5.30. Game starts 7 p.m. Your territory, your team. Become an NT Thunder member today. Sign up and see all the NT Thunder home games from just $80. Become part of the Thunder team today. Help, Help us chase back-to-back -back Premiership glory.
He reminds me of the old bloke. That's the best game I've seen you play for a long, long time. I'm proud of you. Here, Johnny. Here's your Gansey. Thanks, little brother. Number nine. I'm going to win number nine when I play A grade two. Shadow, you better get going. You'll be late for training. Oh, OK, see you, boss. Yeah, right, young fella. I will, see ya. See ya, mate. Another grandson, brother, workmate dead because... And welcome back to TIO Stadium uh, for this qualifying final in the NTFL Premier Division between the Tiwi Bombers and St Mary's. Ed Gallisher along with Josh Sampson tonight uh, from AFL NT. And you can follow us on Facebook, AFL NT. Click on Friend Finder to use that application. And uh, Joshy, some great comments coming through via Facebook tonight and also on our YouTube channel. Great to have your company. Uh, what a game it has been so far. 3-3-21 to 2-5-17. And uh, that 2-5-17 was way on the board before, well, Tiwi Bombers even got their first goal. Yeah, it certainly was. It has. It's been an absolutely fantastic contest so far. The Bombers looked a little bit slow out of the blocks and uh, St Mary's were putting some scoreboard pressure and peppering their 50 early. But uh, once the uh, Bombers got their uh, mojo back again, they put on a, a, a real show in that last 10 minutes. And uh, if it keeps going like this, we're going to be on the edge of our seat so do stay with us for this qualifying final. It's a wonderful sight TIO Stadium as the sun sets and the lights are on and a thrilling game of football is starting to unfold as well as Cameron Islet and the uh, umpire just having a, a chat at the moment. So ball back in the middle and we're ready to go for this second quarter as the ball is bounced and Avard in the ruck wins the tap. Tip man to Mary, loses a handle on the ball. Hale gets it off their inaccurate start. They peppered the goal for their first four shots with four straight behinds until they finally got on the board. And then the Tiwi Bombers caught on fire. So Iggy Vallejo right on 50. Good looking kick off the boot. Doesn't make the distance. Off hands. They're heading in the Darrell White direction. He suckers off the ground. Fresh airy. Still hot potato in the goal square. Cooper puts his foot in it as well. Dancing with the Stars action for everyone. High tackle there by Hale. That time there on the, the likes of Papanga Mary. Who's had a really good last couple of weeks. Streaming out of defence now. Loves to take a bounce. Oh, fumbles the ball. And here comes St Mary's. Cameron Islet chips over the top and finds the target in Shannon Rioli, who won't be playing for the NT Thunder this year. He's actually signed on for the Box Hill Hawks. So uh, going down there, an affiliation with the Hawthorne Hawks, where his cousin in Cyril is. So uh, it's going to be sorely missed for NT Thunder fans. But uh, who knows? Maybe his AFL career could be blossoming sooner rather than later. 
Yeah, you'd certainly like to think so. I think uh, probably playing in um, in one of the higher affiliate leagues like the VFL probably gives him a chance of uh, of being recruited as he uh, slots it through very nicely there. But uh, yeah, it'd be, it's it's I guess it's the Thunder's loss, but most definitely the Box Hill Hawks game. So Shannon Rioli pops through his first, and the score goes to 3-5-23 to 3-3-21. And uh, a very healthy crowd here tonight. That's a good start. I'm sure the AFL-NT be happy with the crowd numbers early on in the piece. Saw a lot of supporters here for the Muck Mucks, the Wanderers earlier on. Just flocking in. Of course, final started last night with the under-14s kicking off proceedings here at TIO Stadium. And more of the same will be happening, of course, around the local grounds. As Tipper Manta Mary loses a handle on the ball, he's under pressure yet again. Corey Kelly's there as well with Hale. Little underarm uh, pass going uh, the way of Wilson as he just keeps on burrowing his head in. Hale's doing the same at the moment. You just see this big mop of hair flying from sway to sway. Bradley Palapamini around the ball at the moment. And the umpire finally decides to throw the thing up. So scoreboard reads 3-5 to 3-3. The ball thrown up. Smith and Avar doing the ruck work. Mungatopi kept out of things. Kelly. Up and under kick into the middle of the ground. Heenan with the ball. He signed up with the Thunder this year as well. Good to see as he gets the ball back with a great give and go for... Munger Topi as the ball flies hard there for Bongetti. He's had to work hard against the two big fellas of St Mary's. And now Cameron Island will clear. And a good mark taken there by Valasia on the outer side. Looking for Daryl White. And good work there by McLinden. Just to uh, see it over the boundary line and it will be thrown in. Roughly on the 50 metre line there to uh, the St Mary's attacking goal. McFarlane coming out of the goal square. So just uh, waiting for some things to be cleared off the uh, ground there by the umpire. He's got the all clear for the boundary and he'll throw it in. So ball thrown in, Daryl White doing the ruck work against Avard. Interference being held was Avard. And the Bombers will get a kick away. So Samson Mungatopi making a league. He gets ignored as it goes into the middle of the ground and a fine mark taken there by Anstis. So John Anstis, what has he got to offer? Penetrating kick inside the forward 50. McFarlane leads, doing the bullocking work. Donald Mungatopi under pressure, trying to tap the ball to his ascendancy. He dives on the ball and gets a free kick for his troubles. No advantage paid. So a little bit of a lull in the game, just open proceedings in this second quarter. Chip kick across, Dion Mankara, lovely long kick, looking for the likes of Tunga Talam. He turns his player inside out, long penetrating kick for in the Eprim direction, tried to tap it down to Jerry Cunningham, but it was to no avail and it's through for a behind. So 3-4-22 to 3-5-23, it's the Saints by a point as they kick it in. On Jeremy Clayton on the outer side, and they're linking up well. Ton to watch. Former Brisbane Lion listed player. Good mark there by Collins. So Collins looks for some action. Preferably at centre half forward. Lovely looking kick for McFarlane. Beautiful looking kick. So the centre half forward, can he find his partner in crime in Daryl White? Instead he chips it forward there to Cooper, he keeps his feet, plays on quickly, snaps across his body and that is through for a fantastic goal. Well the crowd after that, they, they've seen that every five minutes in the NTFL this season but that was a ripping goal there by Cooper, played on quickly, arguably an epic moment of the day. I reckon it's just about up there Rado, it was, uh, looks like uh, Noodles, Noodles McFarlane had uh, overcooked the kick a little bit there but uh, great play from Justin Cooper to be able to maintain his composure at the contest and uh, just worked it back beautifully around the body, a really great goal and uh, it is a little bit of a lot in the contest but uh, St Mary's have, have uh, picked up where they, how they started the first quarter. Very strange to see these two sides in a low scoring contest 
as they've hit huge scores of 200s over the last couple of weeks. But obviously the pressure and uh, elite competition is uh, forcing that scoreboard pressure on both sides. As Ross Tungatalam gets called for throwing the ball. Away goes Jeremy Clay there and well just evades the tackle only just there by Roy Cantilla. So Kevin Tunderwatch. Lovely looking kick. Easy as you like there for McFarlane. Drop what he should have taken. Cameron Hyler gets in his way. And the ball's still up in the air. Papunga Mary trying to get himself out of trouble. Dion Mankara gets a kick away. Nabi Kelly with a mark. So here we go in streams. Ross Tungatalam kicking one of the goals of the year in the first quarter. Jerry Cunningham, what can he do with the ball? Trying to turn his player inside out yet again. Now he's turning himself inside out on the boundary line and got himself in trouble as the ball is out of bounds. So just trying to do a little bit too much. Didn't have much on offer in that forward 50. The ball will be thrown in. Good arc on it. It's Bonchetti doing the ruck work. Hand pass out. Ball is Bice. Might end up with it. In the aerial is Eprim Tip and Woody. And away goes St Mary's on the outer side. But the bad fall of the bounce might equal St Mary's goal. Ricochets off. Little up and under kick. Heading in the Cunningham direction. Play on, says the umpire, as it was touched off hands. Under pressure at the moment. Seen over the boundary line, so that's a win for Tiwi. Very lucky to get it. To be able for this, they look like they were away a bit there, so for the Bombers to be able to hold it in was definitely a win. So Bongetti giving away a free kick as he was third man off. Clayton, under pressure from Palapamini, off to Bice. Good work there by St Mary's to get that quick kick away. And McFarlane sees it over the boundary line, accompanied by Barden. As the crowd are enjoying their meat pies and cold beers, this game is uh, bound to be a thriller. As neither team have uh, broken away from each other as yet. They might have on the uh, point scoreboard at some stage in the game by St Mary's. It was 4-1 to one at one stage. Iggy Vallejo. Looking for leads. McFarlane got a bit of space behind him as the ball chips over the top. Islet falls over. And that's not a good sign if he's hurt himself. As the ball plays on quickly and it's rushed through for a behind. Now, are you allowed to play on from a kick-in? I'm unsure about this because obviously the flags have to be waved in his competition because he's been called back for some strange reason. Yeah, not really sure what that was uh, all about there, but uh, I'm not sure whether that's whether the umpire was uh, calling a bit of rank. They were looking to get it on pretty quickly there, the Bombers, so maybe the goal umpire hadn't uh, signaled at that stage. Jeez, there should have been a free kick there to, uh, to Punga Mary. As Daryl White has marked, and uh, Cameron Isler, just one to watch, wearing a number eight in the green jersey tonight. He's captain of the NT Thunder and just uh, wrenched his knee in a play that happened only a few moments ago. So uh, one definitely to watch out for. He's uh, won the best and fairest in the knee for competition a couple of years. As Daryl White pops that through for a behind. So uh, a few concerns on Territory football fans if uh, he's injured at all, especially in this game for Saints fans. So back on the point scoring board. So it's 4-7-2-3-4. As the Tiwi Bombers come along the grandstand wing, uh, Ross Tungatalam hands back to Barden. Barden on hey. He's popped it through. And the Little Piston Legs have got another one. And what were the Tiwi Bombers doing coming out of the back line? Oh, they were just mucking around with it far too much. A little bit of, uh, little bit of junk time footy. And we're not even uh, at that stage yet, Ado. But, uh, yeah, good, great work there again by St Mary's. That pressure, that frontal pressure and perceived pressure that they're putting on the Bombers inside their own 50 is uh, certainly paying dividends. Or inside their own 50, I should say, is paying dividends. And, uh, gee, wasn't our cameraman just giving it a nice little fist pump as uh, Cooper put it through, as uh, Joshy Heath put it through, I should say. So Joshy Heath, uh, one of the leading goal kickers on the ground, believe it or not. Uh, in the right place at the right time. Cooper probably could have had a shot himself on the boundary line. There was that much space in front of him as the ball is timed there by Clark. Kick away there by Hale. High up and under, heading in the Smith direction. Put his mittens up, didn't get onto it. McFarlane. 
So you're on AFL NTV tonight. Check us out, aflnt.com.au, to follow the game live wherever you are around the world. And, of course, on Facebook, on AFL NT, use Friend Finder on that social networking site. They're starting to build up through Dunn. Another smothered kick. McFarlane hand passes quickly on to Heath again. He snaps across his body. Could get the right bounce. Mungatopi in trouble. Isla taps it down and it just misses. Well, everything. Shannon Rioli was hoping to get an alley -oop pass over there to Cooper and nothing happened. So the volley didn't work there for the Saints and another behind. So 5-8. 38 to 3 4 22 and the Tiwi Bombers practicing their kickouts at the moment. Lucky not to be further behind as Avard tries to put his stamp on the ground. And here comes the likes of Tipamanta Mary off to Rupert Punga Mary. Ross Tungatalam on a run again. Great Lovely kick. Lovely work. And this spits and spats football by the Tiwi Bombers might get them back in the game. They're only a couple of goals down, but, uh, well, five minutes can really create uh, a bit of a zone for them. Yeah, it most certainly can, and uh, a great build-up there. I wasn't sure as to whether the Bombers were going to be able to move it forward like the, they did. They didn't quite have the numbers back in the forward line, but, uh, again, just working their way sensibly through the zone, and uh, Big Ephraim's got a chance to uh, get them right back in this contest. So Ephraim, tip and Woody. Hits the post. So 3-5-23. The Bombers trailing St. Mary's 5-8-38. Right, Shannon Rioli keeps the ball in play. Beautiful work there by Shannon Rioli. Keeping his feet, maybe interfered with. Didn't have control of the ball. And here come the Tiwi Bombers. Now a free kick has happened. Just waiting on something. Got to play this thing. How well how that boundary line could have seen that from there is beyond me. He was he was uh, he was well back the uh, out the back, wasn't he? Easily 80 metres behind the play oh. there, and somehow it's been called out of play. And the Tiwi Bombers, well, they were away there, so another chance for St Marys. Tapped away there by McFarlane, finds Collins. Wilson's there as well, Ooh. going in hard, thrown over the top. Another quick kick away, up and under, Smith in this one. Also there is McLinden, he gets cleaned up. Joshy Heath again, shakes a tackle off to Cooper. Oh, was it holding the man, was it holding the ball? He ducks. Oh, always a fine reward for some uh, great players and go and have a bit of a spell. But, uh, gee, again, I don't know what the, I don't know what of uh, Noodles McFarlane being out the back. So uh, it's, it's starting to uh, get away from a bit here, the Bombers. They really need to start stepping it up. 22 points, is, it's, you can reel it back in, but, uh, you know, they just open up a nice little buffer here and uh, if they keep having that focus on everybody wanting a piece of it it could blow out. Well they've been mucking the line trying to be a little bit too fancy at times. We love their effervescent sort of football but I tell you what basic footy can do the job every now and then and St Mary's approving that at the moment. Desperate for a clearance here the Tiwi Bombers. This tip of Manta Mary is in the middle with Cameron Islet. Tapped down there by Avard and another clearance coming the way of Wilson. Beautiful looking kick. And a fine mark taken there by uh, Tippamotti. So Albert Tippamotti has to be precise with the kick. Finds Avardi, drops what he should have taken. That was a real soda of a mark. Ball still in play. Collins linking up with Clayton. Nice little kick, popping up for Smith. Had to get it. Dio Mankara puts his head over the ball and gets a free kick for it. And we're going to Mungatopi instead. So Donald Mungatopi chips it across, finds Tippamanta Mary. High up and under kick, Bradley Pelopamini under a bit of trouble here from Stringer. Pelopamini keeps the ball alive, uses his skill supremely, shakes two of them, takes a bounce, has to be good with the ball, he usually is. Looking for a Tiwi Bombers play to try and do something for them. As snapping across his body is Patrick Keenan, but he couldn't pull it back. And it's through for a behind. So 3-6-24 to 6-9-45. St Mary's be happy with this quarter so far as we just go into red time. Not long to go, you would think, in this quarter. As Palapamini looks to put pressure on White. Gets the front spot. Avard's there in ascendancy. Collins. Also there is Kelly, Tippermanta Mary, his body, 
Bowls Papunga Mary. And away go the Saints. So the Saints, with a bit of poise, hit the lead up target of McFarlane. Iggy Vallejo, maker of TIO Stadium. Nothing really to kick to. Chips over the top and finds Stringer. He plays on quickly. Long bombing kick. Going up is Clayton. Fine mark may be taken by McLinden. Umpire doesn't think so. And the Bombers have a chance to clear. So Prot Jimmy still yet to influence this game. Just waiting. Candilla tries to clear up. Got no one to kick to. Ross has got nothing to work with. And they just threw the ball away as Antes marks. So Antes swings on his right. Dion Mankara uses his body well. Cooper's there as well. Thrown off the ball. Mankara getting aggressive. And McFarlane having a chat to Roy Cantilla. They can't get sucked into this. And a headbutt oh. by Roy Cantilla. And we've seen this many a time. Many, many a time. A free kick. Just waiting for the head putt. So it is a Tiwi Bombers free kick. A report is going the way. We've caught it on camera. And I think Roy Cantilla might have something to argue with as McFarlane is pleading his case. Oh, it's breaking up all around the ground as well. There's a little bit of a scuffle breaking out just along the centre wing. Well, this is, finals oh, it's on. this is finals football gone wrong here at TIO Stadium. In the forward line, chaos is starting to break out between these two. And I bet you the Nightcliff Tigers are sitting back in the stands, rubbing their hands with glee. Most definitely. I think, uh, you know, the players just need to sort their heads out a little bit here because, uh, yeah, you don't want to be doing anything silly and getting your name in the book, especially uh, coming up against the Tigers. And I think you're right, Edo. They might just be sitting back and going, fantastic. If we can get in under their skin next week, we're in with a good shot. Well, this next five minutes will tell the story of this game. As Bongetti is marked, a quick kick away. Doesn't work. That time it was McLinden as well. Good smother on a the kick there by Combs as this game is uh, well, starting to get a little bit out of control. And I was waiting for the next stacks on the mill to see what was going to happen. But uh, there's plenty of feeling in this game. And how the umpire missed that. It ended up being a St Mary's free kick, but missed that headbutt by Roy Cantilla. Well, something will be asked about at the uh, no as a close hanger. There on Dion Mankara. Advantage paid by Ross Tungatalam. He did this in the first quarter. Desperate for a goal here. The Tiwi Bombers. Can they keep their heads in the game? Jerry Cunningham plays on. Tight on the boundary. Waiting for a bounce. Doesn't get to see the bounce. Has a good mark taken there by Gordon and clears the kick. So Kevin Tun to watch. Settling things down. It's on again. It's uh, centre half forward. Bongetti having a few words to say with Smith. High up and under kick. And probably could have marked that one, Wilson. Instead punched it away. And I think just all the uh, testosterone that's out there on the ground at the moment may have uh, influenced that uh, marking attempt as the ball goes up again. Good tap down. Here comes Mankara. This is Simon. Up and under kick. Epram Tippin Woody needs to be involved with the game. Gordon takes another good mark. He's holding sway down at fullback. So St Mary's Football Club in control on the scoreboard. And in the physical stuff as well. Well, maybe just. So slowing things up on the outer side. Plenty of poise and patience needed. Uh, swooping in on the ball there is Tipper Manta Mary. Needs to be good with the kick. Finds Cunningham. So the Tiwi Bombers. Marks the ball. Nearly collided there with the likes of Mankara. So Roy Cantilla. Look at the action as uh, his nip. No, certainly not. Jeez, it's, uh, it's good to take a breath for a minute, isn't it? I don't know it's been. She's been, uh, but she's been on for the last five or so minutes. This is all the bombers have got to do. It's just oh, and they've given away a free kick again. The bombers. I was just about to say that this is all they've got to do is just focus their their minds on the footy, and now they're starting to give away some really silly free kicks. Well, Tiwi bombers are starting to lose their heads. We saw this a couple of years ago in a grand final when St Mary's got under their skin. They had the lead on the scoreboard, and now the bombers are starting to lose their way into physical and mind games and this is just not good stuff and well for St Mary's they're experienced campaigners they're going for flag number 29 this year 
And, uh, well, let's see what the green machine can muster up here as Bice plays on quickly. Tiwi Bombers, are they going to keep their heads in the game? Goes long over the top of Daryl White. And good work by the Bombers to just mop that one up there by McLinden. Moves it onto the outer side. The Bombers desperate to get back into this game. Losing a handle on things, maybe just. Quick inside the forward 50 and another good mark taken there by McLinden. Looks to clear through Patrick Heenan. So Heenan being marked by Shannon Rioli. Needs some sort of a lead up player. Ostunga Talam in the area up forward along with Samson Mungatopi. Tungatalam unmarked. Has to be good with it. Well, was it a mark? Was it not? Had a pretty good piece on it. Good work there by the likes of McMurray to really hold things up and the ball will be thrown up yet again. It's only minutes away from half time. Be interesting to see what the players do at half time, whether there's uh, any scuffles or not. It's McFarlane giving directions from off the ground. Ball bounced. Trying to get it away, Samson Munger. Blow of action. Anstis, a high up and under kick into the middle of the ground. Good work there by Donald. Donald Mungatobi under pressure. Albert Tip and Woody's there as well. Dion Mankara looks to clear. Has to be good with the kick. Anstis again. And here comes Bradley Palapamini. Saw a sea of red after it. Was it a mark or not? Waiting for the umpire's decision. And it looks like it's Roy Cantilla on the outer side. This is a bit of feeling in it still. Iggy Vallejo involved in this one. Emergency umpire on the ground as players are starting to mill around. This is not a good thing. It's not what we want to see. There's a good looking kick for the Tiwi Bombers. It's home and hosed. And Roy Cantilla in the thick of the action as this thing could get out of hand yet again. As a stoppage has happened and players are staying to mill around, it'll be interesting to see what happens with uh, the likes of Peter McFarlane and Roy Cantilla involved in it yet again. Yeah, Roy Cantilla is most definitely going to watch himself here. He, uh, geez, he threw a haymaker, not only the headbutt, but he also threw a bit of a haymaker, which also went unnoticed. So, um, yeah, good work by the umpires in there, getting right in the middle and just saying, guys, go and cool off, sort yourselves out, and come back and play some footy in the second half. So as the players slowly but surely make their way to their interchange rooms and the cool rooms, let's hope someone's left their air conditioners on in there because <laughs> otherwise it's just going to get even more heated. And if you haven't realised that the Tiwi Bombers did kick a goal there that time by Roy Cantilla, 4 6 to 6 9 45. it's 15 points at halftime. The St Mary's Football Club leading the Tiwi Bombers. We'll be back after a cold drink and hopefully the two teams have had one too. You're on AFL in TV. Remind me of the old blokes. That's the best game I've seen you play for a long, long time. I'm proud of you. Here, Jenny. Easy game. Thanks, little brother. Number nine. I'm going to wear number nine when I play A grade two. Shadow, you better get going. You'll be late for training. Oh, OK, see you, boss. You're hard, young fella. I will. See ya. Okay, boys, let's go out today. Let's make sure we win. Let's do this for John Another grandson, brother, workmate dead because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. comes to Alice Springs on Saturday, March 3. The Adelaide Crows play the Brisbane Lions at Traeger Park. Tickets available now from these outlets. Gates open 5.30, game starts 7pm.
Your territory, your team. Become an NT Thunder member today. Sign up and see all the NT Thunder home games from just $80. Become part of the Thunder team today. Help, Help us chase back-to-back -to -back Premiership glory. I've been travelling the outback for 20 years now, and I keep coming back to Yellowwater, Billabong and Kakadu. I see the visitors cruise out here with Gagajee Dreamy. When they're on Yellow in the wet season, just love it. I prefer to camp in a swag at Gagajee Lodge, Coinda, but Gagajee Dreaming also has accommodation that's a little bit more luxurious. When you want to see Kakadu, cruise, tour or stay with Gagajee Dreaming.
you remind me of the old blokes. That's the best game I've seen you play for a long, long time. I'm proud of you. Here, Johnny. Easy game. Thanks, little brother. Number nine. I'm going to wear number nine when I play A grade two. Welcome back to TIO. Yeah, hard young fella. I will see ya. See ya, mate. Okay, boys, let's go out today. Let's make sure we win. Let's do this for John Another grandson, brother, workmate dead because he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Tee by 15 points, 6.945 to 4.6. It's for tonight, myself, Ed Cowlishaw, and Josh Sampson from AFLNT. You're on AFLNTV, and Josh, what a first half we've seen between these uh, two Titanic sides. Oh, it's been absolutely fantastic, Addo, and I uh, hope everyone's enjoying the coverage on AFLNTV, wherever you are around the country. But, uh, yeah, it, there was a first half that most, de most definitely had something for everybody there. It was uh, some, a little bit of uh, sloppy disposal, I guess you could say, from, from the Bombers at times, and... Uh, and geez, didn't it just uh, get just a little bit willing out there just before half time? A few haymakers were thrown and uh, a couple of boys getting a little bit hot under the collar. But uh, as you said before, uh, Edo with uh, Wanderers as well. Well, I tell you what, uh, no one's done it yet, but the way Wanderers are going at the moment, who knows, it could very well happen. And Roy Cantilla just being notified by the umpires that he has been reported. And uh, the captain in Tipper Manta Mary also coming over just to uh, let him know what's going on. So uh, I think Roy might not, not, might, might not be able to come onto the ground for a little bit. I'm not too sure. We'll just uh, we'll research that a little bit more. But he'll be sitting on the bench for a little bit, I think, uh, because of the coach. And uh, what he did, Machine in St. Mary's, have really been holding sway in that second quarter. They've created that buffer. But Tiwi Bombers got a goal by Roy Cantilla on the siren. We'll see what happens here as the Premiership quarter gets underway here at TIO Stadium. Ball held aloft, and away we go again as Avar does the ruck work. Punched away, are trying to get a clearance now. The Tiwi Bombers in a bit of pressure is Roy, is Ross Tunga Talam. Plays on quickly, Patrick Heenan under pressure. Hand passes over the top, only to the ascendancy of Smith, who taps it back to Samson Mungatopi. He puts one arm in there, stacks on the mill, and a ball will be thrown up. Going to pick himself off the ground. Heard a whistle, and a free kick will be going the way of the Tiwi Bombers as a player's jumper was held. It was Bongetti's, in fact. So only been going a couple of minutes. As Bongetti, precise with a kick off the hands of Cunningham. Tunga Talm keeps the ball alive, using his body well as Prot Jimmy, and uh, he's been very quiet in his first half. He's done some really good stuff throughout the season. Uh, an unheralded hero of the Tiwi Bombers. We'll see what he can do in this Premiership quarter. As a ball thrown in yet again. Tapped down there by Smith, only to his Ruckman uh, opposition in Bongetti. But now they clear it now, St Mary's. Through the likes of Woodley. High, up and under, out of bounds on the full. Just in front of Peter McFarlane. And Dion Mankara will take the kick. So in front of... Uh, Varied fans from different sides here in the Morris Rioli stand. A big booming kick this time by the likes of Barden. Trying to swoop in off hands is the likes of what we could see is Wilson. Good work again. Working hard is Clayton. Links up well with White. Back to Clayton. Got some time. He goes laterally and finds Heath. So Heath, who's been instrumental in organising this lead for St Mary's, got a couple of goals next to his name. Back to Clayton. So Clayton again, precise with the kick, off to White. He has plenty of space. And St Mary's are building ever so slowly towards another big, booming goal. Collins, high up and under, fall to the bottom of the pack. Heenan trying to mop things up for the Bombers. Off hands, through for a behind. So ball will be thrown in. As it moves across off hands this time by 
the likes of Perot Jimmy. Free kick. The Perot Jimmy just in, in front. Over the top, he pops it up. This is going to be hard for Papunga Mary to even get a handle. So 6-10-46 plays of 4-6-30. Ross Tunga Talam under a well, little bit of pressure there from McClark. He's going backwards to go forwards, waiting for someone to give him a lead. It's a three-on-one situation and another good mark there taken by Gordon. So Gordon gives it off to Wilson. Wilson waiting for leads. He can chip it over the top if he likes. Instead, he handballs over there to Collins. He's under pressure. Also in the area there is Woodley. And here comes Dion Mankara to Jerry Cunningham. Time and time again. Wanted to play on quickly. Mungatopi's in the area, but now there's a little bit of space for him to create his kick. So Wilson coming around to mark it to make sure that he doesn't open up the angle too much. So Jerry Cunningham, been quiet tonight by his standards. Beautiful looking kick off the boot, but it's through. So Gordon to kick in for St. Mary's. Trying to find some space. Goes along the outer wing. Has to be good with the mark. And is so is uh, Collins as he goes through. Off half back. Oh, and good a good mark. mark. Great mark. Taken there by McLinden. High up and under kick by the Tiwi Bombers. It's past the Basel footy at the moment. St. Mary's through Anstess. Pops it up to Wilson. He's played plenty of it early in this quarter. Islet loses a handle on things. He's under pressure there by Simon Mankara. They all jump on top of him. And it will be thrown up on the half-forward line for the Tiwi Bombers. So players starting to work their ways back into the game after the halftime break. Smith taps it down. Good work there by Simon, Simon Mankara. And a fine mark taken there by Ross Tungatal. I'm not far enough, says the umpire. Crowd goes berserk with that as the ball is kicked for touch just in front of Cooper. So the ball will be thrown in right in front of the Morris Rioli grandstand and the interchange bench for starters. As Collins comes off and Bice comes back on. Losing his handle on things is Bongetti. High up and under kick there by Dion Mankara. Cameron Islet all by himself. Mark beautifully and 50 metres against Corey Kelly. Knocked it out of his hands. Can't do that. And Kelly not happy with that. And this brings Islet to centre half forward. So looking for Leeds, Daryl White's an option, McFarlane's an option, Cooper's there as well, as Leeds start to materialise out of nowhere. And it's seen over the boundary line just in front of Albert Mungatopi. So ball to be thrown in. Deep in the forward pocket for St Mary's. Got a handy buffer at the moment of 15 points. Only one point apiece since half time for these two sides. As the ball heads towards the boundary line yet again. Has to be good to keep it in as Ross Tungatalam interfered with by John Anstis. And Jerry Cunningham sees the ball over the line. And uh, well, that's got to be a free kick, surely. Wow, we went out of his way that time there in Clark. And you would think that that was unnecessary. So ball to be thrown in right in front of our commentary broadcast position. Good work there by Tipper Man to Mary to grab that ball. Epram uses his body well and uh, well maybe Gordon went a little bit too early with that as well. So the Tiwi Bombers being looked after maybe by the umpires. But hey, this is football. Nothing's fair in this game. You've got to earn your living. The ball will be thrown in. Tiwi Bombers have to work themselves back into it. Ross Tungatalam taps it forward to tip a man to Mary. Anstis is with him as well. Jumping on top of him is Hale. Quick kick away there by Bice. Missing the judgment on that one is Smith. Bongetti rampages through the pack. Dion Mankara has to be precise and a good mark is taken. By the man of the moment in Ross Tungatalam. So Ross Tungatalam will line up 35 metres out, 45 degree angle. We're right behind the kick here at AFL-NTV. 
And we'll see if the superstar can slot this one through. This is very much you feel uh, just uh, the Bombers have been hanging right in here in uh, this last five or so minutes. This is a real make or break time for them. If Tonga Tullin can slot this through, and he certainly has, she's came on here at uh, TIO Stadium, there's no doubt about that. The Bombers are starting to get rid of their mojo working again and uh, have stifled a bit of Samaria's run going into their own forward line. So if we maintain this, uh, this sort of pace, it's going to be an absolute cracker this game. So Ross Tonga Tullin. Gets his second of the night. And all of a sudden, there's a sniff there for the Tiwi Bombers. They haven't been out of it by no means tonight. But there was a period in that second quarter where you just felt that St Mary's was starting to get on top. They got out. And Josh, as you mentioned at the time, that it was a handy buffer, but not one to really put the Bombers away. Maybe, just maybe, the waterfall will start flowing for the Tiwi Bombers. Has a quick handle away there by Papunga Mary. High tackle there maybe, or throw also available there for Thunderwatch. He does get it away though, Clayton off hands. Players diving and streaming all over the place. Smith diving on the ball. Helper Minis there as well for the Tiwi Bombers. As the ball is playing, well, a version of tunnel ball of sorts. Preppies would be happy the way things are going at the moment. As it slowly but surely forces its way through. Bit of feeling in the game. Just got to watch these Ruckman elbows at uh, these stoppages. They could go anywhere as Smith taps it forward, but only to Samson Mungatopi. Kick away that time into Jerry Cunningham's hands. He plays on quickly. Great trap that time there by Tommy Long. He did really well to work on that. Oh, everyone just went in different directions that time. It was a game of four squares. And neither should he be as Cooper clears the ball. A high up and under kick and a good mark taken there by the effervescent Nabi Kelly. He's always got a cool head, Narby. Has to be good with the kick. Tunga Talam. Dealt with that time there by Clark. Under pressure again is Cooper by Dion Mankara. And a good mark taken there by Hale in front of Patrick Heenan. So Hale grabs a breath. Penetrating kick to McFarlane. Off hands. Finds the likes of Barden. Barden under pressure. Good tackle there by Shannon Rioli. Opportunistic. Deals with the shepherding player. Barden again into the middle of the ground. Has to be good with the kick for Bongetti. Doesn't hit the target. Gordon now to clear. He'll go laterally. Finds Bice. Bice on the, the wing closest to the commentary box. Good work there by Iggy Bellagio. Chips it across. Finds Jeremy Clayton. Looking for White, uses his hands and experience well. Just snaked it out of the air. And he'll line up from 45 metres out. Yeah, he's, it was just very much like watching a magnet just uh, clasp itself onto something there, wasn't it? He uh, just had full control of that ball, Darrell White. It's, again, it's that freakish ability he has to be able to control the ball. And, uh, and it looks as though he's put it through. I think he has. And uh, that's a handy answer from the Saints because uh, you just felt the, the way the, uh, the Bombers were getting some momentum going forward that perhaps they were coming. But uh, a great answer in goal there. And now it's uh, back over to the Tewi Bombers to uh, make the, the, uh, the next answer in this game. So 17.52 plays 5.7.37 as a lightning rattles and rolls in the background. And that buffer again created 15 points. Tiwi just need a couple of back-to-back -back goals to really put some pressure on the Saints as their grinding and possession-getting football is really starting to take a stranglehold on this game. Good tap away there by Darrell White. Around the pack, you can see the likes of Collins and also Tippamanta Mary. Umpire comes in. Punga Mary at the bottom of the pack. Picks himself up off the dirt. Good tap away again, under pressure is Clayton. He does get a kick away on his left boot. Needed a bit of talk there by Munga Toby. Chip kicks it across, Nabi Kelly. Lovely long kick out to tip Amanta Mary and we're away if he had taken it. He keeps his feet though, which always seals him in good stead. He takes a bounce. Hand passes over the top to Samson Mungatopi. They're running without the ball at the moment. Here comes Papunga Mary. A long booming kick. Can it go through the sticks? What a wonderful...
the full goal and you can hear the effects coming through the microphones from the Tiwi Bombers supporters. They're thrilled with the result and ever so closely they're etching themselves back into this game. Uh, they're down by nine points now. It is 6 7 43 to 17 uh, 52. Yeah, they certainly are. They're uh, riding home every goal and every little possession that happens. Uh, they are a fantastic part of uh, the NTFL final series, the Terry Bombers, there's no doubt about that. But again, geez, I thought um, well, that was already set up by uh, by Nabi Kelly. Huge booming kick about 60 metres from one edge of the square to the other. And once again, it's game on. We'll see what the Saints can, can offer up here. So Mankara gets the kick away. Exciting football on our hands here at AFL in TV is another quick kick away that time by Woodley but only to the avail of Tipper Manta Mary. He shapes and bakes rattles and rolls off to centre half forward. Has to be good here Papunga Mary. Can he use his skills? He dives on the ball. Creates some space for Bongetti. Out there to Nabi Kelly. He can set up another forward thrust to Jerry Cunningham. So Jerry Cunningham is marked on the tightest of angles. He's 20 metres out. Simon Mankara starting to waft into the forward line. But Jerry Cunningham, we know what he can do. No one cutting off the angle, so he will come out, you would expect. Jeremy Clayton's in that area, though. Drop punt. Has to be good off the boot. It's through for a behind. Eight points the lead to St. Mary's. So fantastic work there by the Tiwi Bombers to really start to put some pressure on St. Mary's. It's hard to stop the running Tiwi Bombers outfit, but the Saints have done so, so far tonight. They lead by eight points. As it comes across the Morris Rioli grandstand, Cameron Islet puts some work into Patrick Heenan. Robert Hales there as well, using his body well is the likes of Albert Tip and Woody. Good tackle, great tackle there by Samson Mungara. Simon Mungara, I should say. Samson Mungatape is just uh, being a nuisance of himself. <laughs> being an instigator. As Darrell White misjudges that one. Simon Mungara loses a handle on the ball. Patrick Heenan and here comes a free kick. Misjudges the ball, going in hard. Five on two situation. Cameron Islet misses the ball as well. Well, we must say for Cameron, he's a little bit rusty at the moment. First couple of games for the Saints this season. Tapped away. Papunga Mary in the area. Cooper gets a clearing kick, but it's nothing but Tiwi Bombers. And Albert Tip and Woody Marks on the half-back line. He moves it across play. Great eyes oh. to Samson Mungatopi. He's under pressure by Peter McFarlane. Linking up beautifully. Brought Jimmy. Has to be precise with the kick. And the crowd is going wild here at TIO Stadium. Bongetti, known for his ruck work, now for his goal kicking ability. And this to bring his side within two points. Yeah, it's uh, interesting the way some of the matchups have gone around the ground. I know. We've noticed uh, Jarrell White in the ruck a couple of times for St Mary's. And uh, as you mentioned, Tim Bongetti, normally known for his ruck work, but uh, adding a little bit of height to the Bombers forward line, and he slots it through. So uh, interesting to see the way it's panned. And once again, the Tiwi Bombers fans are going absolutely nuts down in front of us. But, uh, gee, I'll tell you what, this final really has had everything, hasn't it? It has. Maybe a prelude to this year's grand final, but I'm sure Nightcliffe supporters will go, hang on a second, Edo. <laughs> hang on a second. We haven't played yet. Wait until you watch us next week. They will take on the winner of this match. And at the moment, you'd have to toss a coin on which way it's going to go. It's been, well, <laughs> epic, to say the least. What's your take on uh, having the week off, Edo? Do you think it's uh, a good thing or is it... Uh, As the ball is played on quickly on the outer side, Jerry Cunningham. He plays on quickly. Umpire getting in the way, but Papunga Mary says thank you very much for a behind. Jerry should have gone back for that one, I think, Josh. One point the difference. On a knife's edge here in the Premiership quarter of this qualifying final. 
just gone into red time and it's been all Tiwi Bombers. As the ball goes up, up and away, and a great mark taken there by Dion Mankara, an epic oh. moment of the day, but he's thrown the ball away. As Simon Mankara dives on the ball with tackling efforts, streaming through his tipper, Manta Mary. Can he keep his feet? Jerry Cunningham's in the area as well. He tries to get a kick away. Ephraim Tippen Woody off the ground, no. Seen over the boundary line and maybe a win for the Tiwi Bombers. They trail by one point. We're in the third quarter of this qualifying final. Winner plays Nycliffe. The loser will take on the Wanderers next week in the semi-finals. So ball to be thrown in. Watch for the spill of the ball. Roy Cantilla back on the ground. Corey Kelly across his body, threw another behind, and we're all tied up. So 17.52 apiece after a surge from the Tiwi Bombers, who have kicked four goals in this quarter compared to the Saints two. So Anstis kicks the ball away. It looks laconic, but it is Hale linking up well. High on the boundary line. Josh Heath, what can he do? He's under pressure. Tiwi Bombers with Ross Tungatalam in the area. Always dangerous. Has to be good. Bounces on through to Roy Cantilla. He swings. He turns. And he puts it through for a behind. He had me out of my seat. <laughs> <clears throat> they're just playing that kind of footy, though, at the moment, aren't they, Edo? Every time they go forward, you just feel as though they're going to do something absolutely sensational. The flair of the Tiwi Bombers and the persistence has got them back into this game as Bongetti uses his body in front, pushed into it there by the likes of McMurray, heading in the St Mary's direction, but oh. Nabi Kelly misjudges the mark. Also in the area is McLinden, he clears it, Barden's there as well. Tip and Woody, Albert. They're just waxing with the ball at the moment and maybe doing too fancy with it. Kevin Tunderwatch, fantastic work, moves it on forward. Here comes Iggy Vallejo, bouncing forward. Got to be good with it. McFarlane, can he get it off the ground? Cooper off the ground through for a behind. So it's all tied up yet again. 7-11-53. This time, deep in the St. Mary's forward line as a torpedo punt heads in the Papunga Mary direction. He twists out of trouble. Oh. Gives it off to Narby Kelly. Wow, he spun on a sixpence. And the umpire said that was holding the ball. Bit stiff. Cameron Islet bombs it in long, heading for McFarlane. Dealt with there. Cleaning up as Albert Tip and Woody. Heading for the boundary line. In attendance there is Woodley. Also on the outer side is Corey Kelly. He kicks for touch, grubbering it along, but this time finds Dion Mankara all by himself and a fine mark is taken. They play on quickly, beautiful linking up by the Tiwi Bombers. Can they finish? No, they can't. And Ross Tungatalan was already about to celebrate. I thought he was going to do a double twist turn pipe with his <laughs> somersault that he had prepared. But he hit the woodwork and it's one point at a time. 7-12-54 to 7-11-53. Deep into red time here in the third quarter of this qualifying final was Gordon. Gives it back to the likes of Long. Tommy Long chips it over the top, finds Heath. An interesting position, Bongetti turned around at the right time. Patrick Heenan, hand passes over the top. Roy Cantilla in ascendance. Getting it away is McMurray. Torpedo punt kick. Mungatopi's there. Great tackle by Heenan. Cooper, what can he do with the ball? He snaps across his body along the wing. Punched away there by Barden. Great work there by Barden. And it will be thrown in 80 metres away from St Mary's goal. The ball thrown high in the air. Smith gets it away. Collins tackled tough. St. Mary's appeal for a free kick. They get holding the ball. And Collins not happy with the situation. But they've earned that one, the Tiwi Bombers. 
Can they get a goal before three-quarter time? 7-12 plays 7-11. It's the Tiwi Bombers by a point. They've kicked four goals to two this quarter. Going backwards to go forwards is McLinden. Over there to Barden. They switch play. Find the target on the outer side. So the Tiwi Bombers with Tip and Woody. Back to McLinden, has to mark it, interfered with, just loses possession of the ball. Here comes Cameron Eilert, linking up with his old partner in crime, Iggy Vallejo. This will be a hurtful goal, but it's through for a behind. Again, all tied up, 7-12 apiece. Huge let off there for the Bombers there at OA. Uh, just the way that they were setting up, it looks as though they were going to just looking to ice the clock and a little bit of tempo footy there. But, uh, yeah, gee, Danny McClendon, very unlucky. And, uh, yeah, huge let off. But uh, they've just got to make, maintain uh, the uh, the ball here, the Bombers, and just try and take some of the heat out of this contest. Trying to mop things up. and seen over the boundary line and another stoppage uh, will exist. 7-12 apiece. This game has had absolutely everything. And we've still got another quarter to go, just to whet your appetite. Under kick there by Wilson, heading in the Darrell White direction and just had glue on his fingers that time. And marks the ball just roughly 40 metres out, directly in front. Now he's a very laconic player, Darrell White. It doesn't look as though he ever feels the pressure. We'll see how he goes with this one. This to put his side in front yet again. So Daryl White, never in doubt. Straight through the middle. And now St. Mary's lead by a goal. It is 8-12-60 to 7-12-54. Yeah, Daryl White there, he does. He looks very almost uh, laconic when he uh, plays the game, doesn't he? But, uh, gee, again, a strong pair of hands. Another one of his trademarks, which he was well known for when he played in the AFL. And uh, just a, a couple of little cameos here from Daryl White. Been really important in this uh, third term. And uh, the Bombers' back line just need to work a lot harder just to make sure that he's not getting into that sort of space and uh, having those sorts of opportunities. It's ball back in the middle, thrown up yet again. No bouncing here on the surface tonight. A little bit dewy. The St. Mary's look to clear through Kevin Tun to watch. Putting it out in front of Stringer. Has to run onto it. Has to be good with it as well as a seen over the boundary line. Just in front of Mungatopi. That's Donald. The ball's just been, uh, well, led into that uh, part of the ground uh, ever so often this quarter. As it's tapped down again. So St. Mary's that lead by a goal here at three-quarter time as the players just mill around the stoppage yet again, but there's uh, no fracas involving this time. They know that business needs to be done in this last quarter, and the Tiwi Bombers did everything possible to maintain the rage that last quarter, kicking four goals to three. And, uh, well, who knows what we've got on our hands in this last quarter. We're going to have a short break. We'll be back with the final quarter of this qualifying final between the Tiwi Bombers and the St Mary's Football Club on AFL in TV. You remind me of the old blokes. That's the best game I've seen you play for a long, long time. I'm proud of you. Here, Johnny. Here's your Gansy. Thanks, little boy. Yeah, hi, young fella. I will see ya. Anyway. Okay, boys, let's go out today. Let's make sure we win. Let's do this for Johnny. Another grandson, brother. to Alice Springs on Saturday, March 3. The Adelaide Crows play the Brisbane Lions at Traeger Park. Tickets available now from these outlets. Gates open 5.30. Game starts 7pm. Your territory, your team. Become an NT Thunder member today. Sign up and see all the NT Thunder home games from just $80. Become part of the Thunder team today. Help, Help us chase back-to-back -back Premiership glory.
Well, we're back here at TIO Stadium for the last quarter of the qualifying final for 2011-2012. The winner of this side will take on the Nycliffe Tigers next week, who have had a bye, whilst the loser will take on the Wanderers, who flogged the Waratahs by 99 points in the elimination final, which was played earlier this afternoon. And uh, we've only got to go the difference. Ed Caldershaw, Josh Sampson with you on AFL NTV. Josh, which way can you see this one going? Because at the moment I can't pick a winner. Oh, I certainly can't either. I reckon this one's set to go right down to the wire. Uh, neither side really gaining much ascendancy, especially in that third quarter, although the Bombers did uh, seem to have their lion's share of possession. Um, oh, look, it, it really could go either way. And just um, even though it's been a low scoring affair, the quality of this contest, unfortunately, there is going to have to be an, an, a very unlucky loser here. And uh, uh, no, if, if this is, if this is uh, how we started off the NTFL finals and it's going to continue like this, long may it continue because it's going to be sensational. We could have a situation here where extra time might be needed as uh, we saw the scores tied a couple of times during that third quarter. And, well, that would create havoc with my social occasions after this match. But uh, we, we'd be great. it would be great to see, though, because uh, these two sides have really forced the tug of war. The way St Mary's have gone about it, their uh, dour possession, uh, amassing game, uh, their strong bodies over the ball, and Tiwi with their exciting and fluent football. It, there's just been two different stories that are being told here tonight. Yeah, most certainly. And uh, interesting you mentioned extra time. I've uh, been here the best part of the day and uh, in the under-18s, under I think it was, uh, Big River Hawks and Waratah end up going through to extra time. Uh, Big River have been in sensational form all year in the 18s and uh, Waratah ended up knocking them over. So uh, it just goes to show you, you don't necessarily have to be the best team all year, just the best team when it counts. There's a player stack on the mill yet again and the ball will be thrown up. And it was thrown down. So lightning crackles in the background as the ball goes up again. Tap down there by Bongetti, desperate for a clearance of the Tiwi Bombers to get back this, well, ascendancy that the Saints have. Bradley Palapamini just bombs it in long. Corey Kelly's in the area. Well trapped there by Tungatala. Spinning around. He's celebrating already. He's celebrating because it's gone through the big ones. Fantastic work there by Ross Tungatala. He celebrated as soon as the ball hit his foot. All tied up, 8-12 apiece. Oh, he certainly did. It was a sweet hit, though, from Rossi Tungatullum. It was a big, high, looping kick that just sailed majestically through the big ones. And, uh, you know, Rossi Tungatullum, he, he came off earlier in the, the third term, looked a little bit proppy, and there was a few concerned uh, looks at, uh, down on the Tiwi bench. But uh, if, if they're going to... Uh... Can they build on it? Or can the St Mary Green Machine rock it on in to a big game next week against Nycliffe? As Dion Mankara hopes for rain with that kick. It just goes high and high and hits the ground. Punched away there by the Saints. Joshy Heath trying to use those piston legs of his to trap down Mankara. On the outer side now, the Tiwi Bombers looking for Popunga Mary. He finds the target, waltzes on into the forward line and easy as you like, kicks her behind. 8 13 61 to 8 12 62 scoring opportunities there for the Tiwi Bombers to St Mary's yet to score. Just got going here in this last quarter if you're just joining us on AFL in TV. Tell your mates about us to log in each and every week on aflnt.com.au. Next week, Adelaide and Brisbane in the NAB Cup game at Traeger Park in Alice Springs. Hope you can join us then. In the meantime, we carry on here at TIO Stadium as the ball heads into McFarlane, end of the ground. Punched away there by Barton, still in play. Mungatopi trying to do well with it. Cooper snaps across his body, looking for anyone in a green shirt to help him out. But the ball is seen over the boundary line. Jeremy Clayton looking to influence the game along with Shannon Rioli as they waltz back to their positions. So ball thrown in, 80 metres away from St Mary's attacking goal. Tapped down there by McFarlane looking for Collins. He's dealt with as an errant elbow, maybe he collected him. Samson Mungatopi off to Bradley Palapamini. We've seen this electric spying stuff in the NT Thunder colours. He's done it for the Tiwi Bombers as well as Ephraim Tepham Woody has marked as easy as you like. And a big full forward. Where's the same number as the former AFL champion in Jason Dunstall? He kicks goals like him as well, the lead up forward. So Ephraim Tepham Woody. Already got two next to his name tonight. Gets close to the man on the mark. He puts it high, it swings back and they're celebrating. 
The Bombers are up, up and away. And they now lead by seven points. Yeah, they certainly do. And, geez, I tell you what, he's a great kick for goal from Tip and Woody. But, geez, he loves a good celebration too, doesn't he? He knows how important that was this game. Ground there, we uh, just noticed uh, a couple of the Wanderers boys just having a quiet look at who they could be suited. So uh, it's all happening here. The crowd are up and about, and uh, Ephraim Tip and Woody's up and about. And again, this seesawing contest is uh, still well in the balance. Bombers by seven. As Bongetti and Smith do the ruck work again, this time just trying to force his way through the pack. That time is Wilson. Stacks on the mill. And it will be thrown up yet again. Big crowd here tonight. A thousand people easily in attendance. Tap down by Barry, maybe in the back. It is so. Plays on quickly, heading for Mungatopi. This is Donald. He's got Dion Mankara leading up forward. He finds the man. Cooper under pressure. He drops what he could have taken. Just waiting to see what's happening here. Maybe a free kick going the other way now. Umpire's just holding things up, making sure everything's above board. And Simon Mankara has the ball. 60 metres out from goal. To Epram Tippamwoody. He stops, he props, he pops it over the top. Looking for Port Jimmy. Has to be good with it. Going in hard was Cameron Islet. They're under pressure, the St Mary's Football Club at the moment. Here comes Ross Tungatalam. He shakes one. He settles himself. A worm burning kick through to Jerry Cunningham. Over the top. Can he bend it back? He can't. It's through for a behind. So Jerry Cunningham. Getting the commentators out of his seats yet again. <clears throat> and it's through for a behind. They're up by eight points now. A handy behind, maybe. As we've just gone ten minutes in this final quarter. Gordon to kick it in for St Mary's. Looking for some sort of option. McMurray leading. Instead goes to Kevin Tunderwatch. Tight in the back pocket for the St Mary's footy club. Looks to bomb it long in the Wilson direction. He puts his mittens up for that one. Off hands and it's through for a boundary throw in. Right in front of the St Mary's interchange as the ball is thrown in. Bongetti late on the scene, punches it back from whence it came. Cooper keeps it in play, or oh, maybe over the line. And here comes the likes of Jeremy Clayton. Popping it up for McFarlane, uses his body well. And well, St Mary's were for fortunate there that the ball wasn't over the boundary line according to the umpire as Joshy Heath will line up from 40 metres out. They just chip it across and find Darrell White and the Tiwi Bombers have been caught napping in defence. Yeah, they certainly have and uh, on, certainly on not the first occasion we've uh, noted that just a little bit about uh, the Bombers is that uh, sometimes they can uh, go a little bit lacking in defence and again, a bloke like Darrell White, you don't want it in his hands in, in that sort of space because chances are he will make you hurt and it's game on again. So Darrell White kicks another. He's got two next to his name. And the St Mary's Football Club back in this game. Not that they were ever out of it. Trail by two. Well, we're going to be sitting on the edge of our seats like porcupines for the rest of the night, it seems. Uh, just some score updates from AFL circles, if you're interested. The Demons went down by three points to Gold Coast earlier on and were trailing the Brisbane Lions last time we checked by two points. As Bongetti taps it out. Papunga Mary putting his body over the line. Prot Jimmy, can he put himself into this game at a crucial time? Hand pass didn't hit Bradley Palapa Mini. And away goes the likes of Woodley on the outer side. Trying to find a target in Kelly. Mopped up by Barden. And Mungatopi and Sampson. Chips it across. Finds the big fella in Bongetti. He's been moved into the ruck. After various spots in the half back line and also in the full forward line. Good kick, Corey. There was plenty of pressure on him. Players done on the half back line. Slowing things up, playing some tempo footy. Tunderwatch. Looks for a player or two. Mungatopi interferes with the kick on its trajectory. And here come the Tiwi Bombers again inside Great the kick. forward 50. A beautiful kick finds Jerry Cunningham. And someone just needs to tell him to go back and kick it. 
always looking to play on, always putting pressure on other players to be in the right spot at the right time. So Jerry Cunningham on a tight angle again, whether it's the yips or not. But you think a guy that's kicked 33 goals in the last two weeks would uh, have just a little bit of confidence of putting it through. He has hit the woodwork a couple of times tonight. As Cunningham comes in, good looking kick. Goal umpire didn't have to move too much, but she wasn't happy with the way that it turned out in through for a behind. Yeah, the radar hasn't been on tonight for Jerry Cunningham, hasn't it? And, and like you said, I'd, I'd certainly be getting around town with a little bit of swagger if I was uh, putting bags of uh, 10, 12 and 15 on the board uh, over various weeks. But uh, look, it's it's been a pretty good even contribution across the board. Efren Tip and Woody's been sensational tonight for the Bombers. So, And again, this is one of their strengths, is that they've got such versatility that uh, if one player's not having a great night, other, players, other guys will stand up. So Smith interfered with by Bongetti as the kick came in from Gordon. The big Ruckman sprays the kick straight to his former Thunder teammate, Nabi Kelly, who's been really good off the back line tonight. Started in the middle and worked his way back, just looking for someone to kick to as this fulfilled zones there. Avard tried to interfere with the kick and uh, it's through over the boundary line and yet again on the half-forward flank for the Tiwi Bombers. Misses absolutely everything. Had more time than he thought he had. So John Anstis is marked in front of Port Jimmy, who has had a very, very quiet night by his standards. John Anstis moves it along to Darrell White, oh, who yes. takes an absolute thriller of a mark. One of the epic moments of the day. Shows the ball to the crowd. Wilson into the middle of the ground. Again going up is Munga Topi, and he's off and running. Joshy Heath in ascendance, but here comes Munga Topi. Donald, what can he do? Pop it up for Ephraim. Ephraim lets it fall to the ground. Will he play on? He does the goal. It's the post. One point at a time. Had the opportunity to handball the ball, but he didn't. 9-16-70 to 9-12-66. And the errant kicking, you'd have to push that down to finals pressure. 16 behinds to 12 for both sides tonight. Wowee. Again, there's a good mark taken there by Islet. Dropping again. Here comes Papunga Mary. He misses it. Also, there is Dion Mankara. He tries to oh, chip lovely. it away. Finds the target. Another worm burning kick for Jerry Cunningham. Back to Papunga Mary. Can he pick it up in time? Players dive on top of the ball, and the umpire will throw it up 30 metres out from goal. That's a win at the very least there for the Bombers. Just getting a little bit cute again with their movement of the ball, but uh, they almost looked away there, St Mary. So great chance for the Bombers to uh, put a bit of a gap between themselves. So Smith wins the tap out, but it's the Tiwi Bombers that win the clearance. It bounces through, and they're celebrating yet again. Another great goal to the Tiwi Bombers. And why wouldn't you be pumped up about it? Because it was Rossi Tunga Talam scooping in off the beautiful tap work of uh, Smith, but unfortunately he wasn't wearing green and gold, he was wearing red and black, and the Bombers get another handy goal. Rossi Tongasalam, he is back in town, there is no doubt about it. He has had a sensational night for the Bombers, and uh, mighty well be pleased with his uh, work as well. He gave it a bit of the old Bay 13 to the crowd, and uh, you know, he's, he's a really pivotal part of this uh, Bombers assault on the on the Premiership. So uh, all of a sudden it's out to 10 points, and St Mary's, they've got, to, they've got to answer a few questions here. And the Tiwi chant goes up here in the Morris Rioli stand at TIO Stadium. Great to have your company tonight. We've been going 15 minutes as the ball's tapped down yet again. jumpers all over the place really throwing their bodies in against the smaller but this is their chance for the Bombers here comes the Saints though through Wilson pops it in the McFarlane direction it falls to Darrell White he hand pass looking for someone Peter McFarlane throws it on his left boot pops it up for Hale will it bounce it does so trapped there by the likes of Tip and Woody that was Albert Bradley Palafamini he just Handballs it over his head, hoping for a prayer. Big high tackle, and it was a high tackle. 
So Cameron Islet, the Joel Selwood of the NTFL, always seems to find a free kick when he needs it most. So Cameron Islet hasn't had uh, many games for the St Mary's Football Club, but this is an important one for him and one of the important kicks of the year for the St Mary's Footy Club as he comes in. Lovely looking kick off the boot. And it's through for a goal. The umpire had to... Uh, again, just popping up at the right time and, and doing some really crucial one percenters for, uh, for St Mary's. And again, we're back to four points. We're just about to approach red time. I, I, I'd seriously hope that uh, if you have some sort of condition that you've uh, got a hefty supply of medication behind you because uh, this is going to be an absolute heart stopper. So there's the ball. Thrown up again, winning the tap out was Smith. Corey Kelly traps it. Here comes Prot Jimmy. Always good with the ball to Jerry Cunningham. Plenty of space, Mungatopi flooding back out of the St Mary's defence. Epram Tippam Woody leaves the goal square. There is no one in the goal square. Umpire calls play on. He pops it up for Corey Kelly. Interfered with there by Ro Robert Hale. And will play is dive on the ball. Kelly pops it up in the air. Gordon, plenty of poise there, marks it on the last line of defence. And he looks to clear. Onto the outer side through Heath. Under pressure as he kicks it. Good strong mark. No, wasn't paid there by Tip and Woody. Great pressure on the ball from McFarlane. And seen over the boundary line. So it's the Tiwi Bombers by four points as we approach red time here at TIO Stadium in the last quarter of this qualifying final. The winner plays Nightcliff next week. Tap down there by the ascendancy of Rioli, who finds Cooper, who links up again with Rioli. Good lead and build up off the hands of White. In deep into the forward line of St. Mary's, seen over the boundary line. McLinden will throw, be part of the presence when it will be thrown in. So four points in this one. There's the Wanderers football just in front of their social club rooms. Watching this game intently on the seeing who they will be playing next week. Here come the Tiwi Bombers. Through Simon Mankara. Kicking for touch. And Ross Tungatalam sees it over the boundary line, right in front of the scoreboard. The loser will take on the Wanderers, the winner, Nycliffe. Samson Mungatopi comes off the ground. Tim Bongetti comes back on. He's going straight to the forward line. Avar doing the ruck work for the Tiwi Bombers. And here they go again through Papunga Mary. Nice little chip kick. Prot Jimmy has to wait for the ball to turn up. He chips it across. Finds Epram. He gets paid the free kick because he didn't take the mark. Will line up for goal. 35 metres out. 45 degree angle. And we're just waiting for a celebration, really. Oh, absolutely. We, uh, if he can bang this one through, Lord knows what he's going to do. But uh, again, just uh, pointing out with uh, with Tim Bongetti when he was coming on before, we really should point out that uh, Brody Ovard has been sensational for the Bombers in the Rock tonight. He's been uh, a, he's been the reason why Bongetti's been able to get forward as a focal point and created a couple of mismatches across the ground for the Bombers. So Epram to Pumwoody. kicks to put his side further in front. He pushes it across the big sticks and through for a behind. So they're now out to a five point lead. A seven point lead would be handy for them, or even a seven point play for that matter, as the ball comes back into the half forward line. And guess what? It's seen off in the boundary line, 60 metres out away from the Tiwi Bombers goal again. The amount of times the ball has gone off out of bounds in that area is ridiculous tonight. We need a stat on that, I reckon. <laughs> As the ball is thrown in, tapped down by Avard. Good work there by Corey Kelly on Iggy Vallejo to Tunder Watch. Ooh. And it was a throw from Kevin Tunder Watch. So they've been penalised, and the Tiwi Bombers will take the kick through Simon Mankara. Big kick by Patrick Heen and a high up and under. Off hands the way they want it to fall. 
St. Mary's players all over the place. Quick kick away by Anstis. Had to watch the bounce that time was McMurray. He's under pressure. Holding the ball on Shannon Riola, you would think. Great tackle. And Patrick Heenan sets things up again. Off the fall of hands, St. Mary's trying to mop things up under intense pressure by the Tiwi Bombers. Clayton's there as well, seen over the boundary line. 40 metres away from Tiwi's attacking goal, heading to the airport end of the ground here at TIO Stadium. Bongetti does the ruck work. Palapamini's there as well, so's Tunder Watch linking up with Iggy Valasia. On to the outer side of the ground. Nothing but bombers there. McLinden under pressure. Tip and Woody, that's Albert. Off to Mungatopi and he has a paddock to play with Donald Mungatopi. He's taken two bounces. Has to be good with the kick. Finds Tip Amanta Mary. And now he has to wait for a lead. Corey Kelly has to be good. Plays on quickly, ball falls to the ground. Under pressure again is Rioli. Plenty of pressure by the Tiwi Bombers and that surely is holding the ball. St. Mary's trying to dive in and clear this ball out of defense. They trail by five points. Here comes the Tiwi Bombers, need to mark. And what better hands to fall into than Jerry Cunningham with the yellow brick road boots. Jerry Cunningham will line up to make this 11 point game and near impossible for the St. Mary's Football Club. Yeah, he's just popped up at the right time, hasn't he, uh, Jerry Cunningham? And, uh, you know, you can see the Saints at that uh, last boundary throw and they're hurriedly getting numbers back into the centre because they'd all drop back into this huge wall in defence. But, uh, yeah, you're right, if Jerry Cunningham, we've just ticked into red time, if Jerry Cunningham puts this through, it's, uh, it's going to be very difficult from here for the Saints. He's hit the woodwork three times tonight. This time he pops it straight through the middle and rams it up in the air. 11 points is the margin. The Tiwi Bombers as the clock strikes red here at TIO Stadium. Only minutes remaining you would think. And all of a sudden the Bombers, favourites for this year's Premiership, will be taking on the other favourites for this year's Premiership, Nightcliff next week, maybe. The chant goes up, Josh. It certainly does. Yeah, tell you what, uh, oh, with that, that was some celebration from Jerry Cunningham. I mean, you could you could sit there for hours watching a highlight reel of the way the Bombers play footy, but I tell you what... I... Well, we could be at this for a while. <laughs> As badly Palapa Mini puts pressure on Joshy Heath. This game is not done and dusted just yet, but the first nail in the coffin has been done by the Tiwi Bombers. St Mary's. Looking for the lead up in McFarlane, who has been valiant all night. Under pressure yet again, Joshy e. Heath, who's been in and out of the game. Really good first half. Good work there by Wilson. Snaps across his body, but it's only marked there by Bongetti. And good work there by Dion Mankara to trap the ball. Finds Ross Tungatalam. And all of a sudden, St. Mary's are found wanting. Epram leads, but he goes longer for Jerry Cunningham, who marks. No, doesn't mark, plays on quickly. They're looking for touch, and they find it through for a behind. It's two goals, the lead. So 11-18 to 10-12. As the ball makes its way along the boundary line, Shannon Rioli with the ball. Marks in front of Port Jimmy. Looking for leads, Cooper's there. Instead he goes short to Long. So the crowd up and about. Bombs at Long and Long. Bongetti marks what he drops what he should have. That one was Barden. Here comes Cooper. He needs someone to lead for him. There is no one there for St. Mary's except for Iggy Vallejo. And he's taking on two. Kick away there by Narby Kelly. Good work there by Cooper. Spins and turns in a bit of trouble and maybe taken high by Patrick Heenan. So Cooper in a bit of cramping trouble as Wilson 
evades the tackler, bombs it long, and St. Mary's have got their tall timber in the right spots at the moment as Bongetti goes laterally. Tip and Woody and Albert is there with him. He takes a couple of bounces, that's two now. Long kick looking for Epram. Drops what he should have taken. Gordon looking to mop up for St. Mary's. Epram's there as well. To mop things up is Clark. So Clark for St. Mary's on the outer side. Players in attendance from Tiwi. Here comes Pro Jimmy, popping it up. Epram. And you would think the sting has gone out of this game because St. Mary's have seemed to lost their luster on the goal part of their green and gold Guernsey. And they're already looking ahead to next week. Especially if deep into red time. As Epram Tip and Woody. 11-19-85. 13 points. And the way that the Saints have gone about it, probably unattainable, especially when the siren sounds. The Tiwi Bombers into a semi-final next week, which could equate into a Guernsey in the grand final if they knock off the Nycliffe Tigers. But that is yet to be seen. And the way that the Nycliffe Tigers have watched this game tonight is two sides have really battled each other out. Well, they might be slight favourites going into it. St Mary's going down by 13 points tonight. 11-19 to 10-12, Josh Sampson. Yeah, what a fantastic result there for the Tiwi Bombers. Uh, again, a lot of questions were asked during the week as to whether that finals hoodoo could continue or rather was going to continue. And uh, look, I think they've made a bit of a statement tonight, the Bombers, and just said, hang on to, uh, to the St Mary's, the Nycliffs, the Wanderers. We're still here and we are still very much in town. And uh, if you're thinking already about uh, lifting up the cup, you might have to get through us first. For St Mary's, not, I don't think they really disgraced themselves tonight. They, they play, did play really well. It was just the Bombers were a little bit cleaner um, as uh, in the, uh, the crunch parts of the contest. So... <clears throat> That's another mouthwatering fixture next week. Wanderers, the old Mucmucks and St Mary's are going to be battling it out. The winner gets to uh, live another day. The loser calls it mothballs for 2011-12. So, again, where else would you be at this time of the year? The finals are on. It's territory footy. Absolutely sensational. And the monkeys off the back as well. They've knocked off St Mary's in a final series. And uh, that has been their hoodoo over the last couple of seasons. A great effort by the Tiwi Bombers. The only downside of the game was Roy Cantilla. He'll come under review uh, this week after a headbutt right in front of us against Peter McFarlane in a hotly contested second quarter. Look, the Saints, they were leading, but you, you thought that if Tiwi got a run on, which they did in that third quarter, they were a chance tonight. Uh, and it just showed the two different styles, the two different stories of the night. The, the free-flowing Tiwi Bombers, the run in the legs over against the heavy, muscled, articulate bodies. And the way that they use the ball, St Mary's, they, they're a possession-winning side. They go around the boundary line and then work themselves in. Whereas Tiwi, if they have any chance, they'll go through the corridor and away they go. Ross Tungatalan, one of the highlights of the night uh, in that second quarter, kicking that, well, point-to-point -point goal where he just streamed through the middle of the ground, evaded a couple of tacklers and popped it through. Tiwi Nycliffe next week, really looking forward to that one. And St Mary's and the Wanderers, uh, just two tantalising matchups. Oh, very much so. If um, <clears throat> if you're uh, if you're a territory footy fan at this time of the year, then your appetite is just going to be well and truly wet. You've got uh, as we just have a look down there at uh, the Tiwi Bombers hierarchy. They are absolutely pumped that the boys have got up, and uh, I think quite thinking to themselves that that'll uh, keep a couple of naysayers quiet. But uh, yeah, looking forward to week two of the finals for sure. We get to see if Nycliffe can benefit from that first week off. We get to see if the Bombers can uh, take another giant step forward towards shaking that finals hoodoo. And and of course, in the first semi-final, we get to see if uh, the Wanderers' fairy tale continues, and, or whether uh, St Mary's can uh, live to fight another day. So, if you're up and about in the territory next week, make sure you get along to TIO Stadium. But if you're in Alice Springs, like we will be next week, then come along to Traeger Park, as we will be calling the Adelaide Crows versus the Brisbane Lions in round two of the NAP Cup. All the website aflnt.com.au, and of course, we'll be getting really excited about the way that the NTFL finals are headed.
heading. Nycliffe and Tiwi in a semi-final which could equate into a grand final spot whilst it'll be an elimination sort of final in the other semi-final as St Mary's will take on the Wanderers who are coming home with a wet sail, sail in season 2011-2012. Josh, great to have you company yet again. Hopefully we get a chance to call another game as the prelim finals are just around the corner and of course the big one in the grand final only a couple of weeks away and also the Nichols medal this week. Who's your tip? Oh, gee, I'm, I'm still probably going uh, with someone from the Bombers, perhaps a Rossi Tunga Tullum, but who knows, there's probably potential that uh, because they've had so many great players that they could do a little bit of vote stealing off of each other, but uh, no, nah, it's, it's, it's uh, very much an institution up here and, and a great night. We've seen different players win the Media Awards. Jerry Cunningham took out the ABC one in the NT News. It was Troy Coates as the Tiwi Bombers come off the ground. They take on Nycliffe next week. It's been great to have you company here at TIO Stadium. Tonight, the Tiwi Bombers points and the Wanderers over the Waratahs are by.